Hi everyone, my name is Kimberly and welcome to another day on Rhea Joke. Hope you all are staying healthy, well, and blessed. I'd like to discuss different topics related to perceptions and behaviors around overall wellness. Uh, so if this content is up your alley, feel welcome to subscribe to my channel. Now on to today's topic self-image. First off, why is self-image in the wellness category? Human psychology is a wellness topic, uh, contrary to voices in opposition. In an earlier video, I talked a good length about mental health, uh, taking a bare bones approach to how we interact with it in our daily lives. If you want to get to that video, I'll link it in the description below um, so you can watch it. But um, wellness is not just physical. It's also mental, emotional, spiritual, occupational, and so on. Wellness relates to well-being, and we are human beings. How we perceive ourselves and our environment plays a role in our behaviors in these areas. Now that we've addressed that question, let's get more into today's topic. We hear the word self-image a lot these days especially as we become more and more of a heavily image-driven society. But what is self-image? It simply boils down to the image we hold about ourselves. Uh, however, how we feel about ourselves is a bit more convoluted. I like to divide this understanding of self-image into external contributors and internal contributors. External contributors refer to influences in the environment around us. Internal contributors refer to perceptions we develop within our own minds. I want to start off with external contributors. Um, and that being said, I'd like to talk about one, how others perceive us outside of our own personal perceptions, and two, how we perceive ourselves with others as the comparison. The big question out there is likely, Kim, your self-image shouldn't rely on what others think about you. And yes, well, I agree. It's, that's just not the reality for us, is it? The truth is we do place some level of value on what others perceive of us. If there's one person out there you care about, trust me, you care to some degree or you regard what um, they think or consider what they think or whatever, you care, period. We are social creatures and we're part of a society that has built itself based on the social comparisons we make, like social hierarchies, for instance. So that's that. Now, as far as how others perceive us outside of our personal perceptions about ourselves, I like to think of this as a measure of how we choose to carry ourselves in relation to the observant eye. This could be what we wear or the level of presence we have, um, essentially how we display ourselves to the world around us. You've probably heard that a person typically sizes you up in the first seven to 12 seconds of meeting you in person on social media and virtual meetings nowadays, it's likely even less, um, less time that a person really takes in who you are just by pure visual cues. Regardless of how we feel about the way we project ourselves to people, people will still draw their own conclusions about us. With these conclusions, they play a role in how the world ultimately treats us, and that treatment becomes the experiences we eventually internalize. In regards to how we perceive ourselves with others as the comparison, we can simply refer to this as social comparison. And this is also nothing new to us. While we may not like to admit it, there are times we tend to compare ourselves to others. It's just the truth in human nature. It could be with physical attributes or certain character traits. Essentially, this social comparison is built from our personal insecurities that arise in response to societal standards of what is deemed acceptable or desirable. How this plays into our self-image is pretty evident especially in an era where our desirability seems to be measured by how many likes we get in relation to how many others get. Uh, this idea likely has its roots in evolution with the survival of the fittest mentality. And this 
has much bearing in the choices that we make to increase our level of status in society. It's not necessarily bad to want to improve yourself based on the feedback you get from your environment, but that act should always, always come from a place that is in direct alignment to your values. Now that we've talked about external contributors a bit, let's now get into the internal contributors. Here's where I want to delve into one, how we feel the world perceives us, and most importantly, how we perceive ourselves with only ourselves as the standard. We discussed how the world perceives how we choose to display ourselves externally to the world around us. Now let's talk about how we think the world perceives us because there is definitely a difference between the two. Have you ever heard the phrase, the mind is the devil's playground? We don't really need much assistance or effort in creating a negative image of ourselves. That's on automatic, unfortunately. It actually takes a lot more effort to develop um, positive attitudes. When we're in our heads, constantly cycling through what ifs and can I reallys, the biggest disservice we do is giving power to attributes that were never really a problem to begin with, leading to them manifesting in our lives and in turn developing into the fabric of who we are. The world will think whatever they want at the end of the day, that's a given, and we don't have we don't really have much control over that. It's what we think of ourselves that become either our salvation or our absolute downfall. However, when it comes to what we think others think of ourselves, it's usually to our detriment. That process feeds not only our into our attitudes and behaviors, but it also feeds into the social comparison. It's like we're in a wrestling match, being hit from both sides, outside and inside. From perceptions that are that either are not or do not feel like our own. And that's unfair to us. And the ultimate result is a good deal of social anxiety that hits you like a ton of bricks. Uh, let's turn our attention to the core of our self-image, which is how we perceive ourselves only holding ourselves as the standard to be accountable to. And this is a great place to be because you're not constantly comparing yourself to others or thinking about other people's perceptions. You are completely in your own world. Um, and you know, what I mean by this is that instead, again, of comparing ourselves to others, we compare our present selves to our past selves in order to hopefully achieve our best future selves. We are led to understand our motives, our strengths, and our weaknesses. And all of this allows us to better take charge of our journey of growth where it can be potentially problematic is that instead of adopting an awareness of reflection, we can become overly critical about our past selves. This doesn't allow us the space to forgive our past selves and grow from there, um, but instead we become fixated on our problems and inadequacies. That's where we can turn into our own worst enemy. So as far as these four layers that I mentioned, um, you know, the external contributors, the internal contributors, these are the four layers of self-image that jump out at me. Uh, I want to clarify that the reason I listed them all was not to demonize or idolize any one of these layers. Uh, I believe all of them build the composite that is our self-image. They all exist throughout our lives and each have their own role to play at different times of our development. We discuss not only what influences make up our self-image, but also how these components affect our perceptions and choices. However, what's the solution or the end goal to all this? Well, it comes down to fortifying our inner strength to be able to elevate the image that we hold for ourselves. And there are some ways that we can do that. One is focusing on growth and evolution in all areas of life. This plays into the mindset of becoming the best version of ourselves. This does not mean striving towards perfection. I just wanna make that perfectly clear, but it does mean focusing on development. 
How do you get to a place in life where you can achieve true meaning and significance for yourself? Learn to have grace with yourself when you fall down, but also encourage yourself to get back up. And have enough wisdom to know that life is and will be full of these moments. Be open to experiences where you can learn and grow in different areas. I like to think of this as treating yourself to an adventure. Pick up different hobbies, pursue a goal you've always wanted to achieve but never really stopped to do so. Um, explore new genre of thinking that could stand to maybe challenge you a bit. Something. We are not built to be these static beings. We are and will always be evolutionary. Secondly, find ways to normalize your perceptions around vulnerability. And the reason I say this is that an awareness needs to be built in knowing that the journey will never be easy. You will have times where you feel on top of the world and times when you feel like crap. Uh, you may not have all the answers and that's okay. You have nothing to prove to anyone but yourself. Also, while it's not easy to be vulnerable, it's sometimes in those moments where we become the most open to introspection. I know that's definitely happened for me in moments where I was at my lowest. It really gave me insight into um, some of my goals, ambitions, who I wanted to become as a person and it was where a lot of great ideas were born you don't need to be on all the time plus it can get exhausting doing so so give yourself a break every now and then third continuously work at developing a strong self-awareness a good way to achieve this is with daily and weekly moments of reflection which can come about through meditation, recall, and so on and so forth. There's many different practices for this, and there's many different apps out there that can even help you get started. In these moments, we can get up close and personal with understanding our core values and priorities. Spending time to go back and write down our goals and aspirations can create a better alignment between our thoughts and behaviors by helping us to identify things in life that are truly important to us. Through this, we can begin to build a healthy and honest relationship with our inner selves. And in the process, we learn to become more secure with who we are. Lastly, and this is where our external environment now comes into play, surround yourself with a healthy, social circle or association of people. This is very vital. Whether or not we want to admit it, we are heavily influenced by those around us. And our values and decision-making tends to be proof of this to a certain degree. This doesn't necessarily mean that we're clones of the people we're closest to in our lives. That's not what I'm saying. But it does mean that we share core attributes that reveal certain similarities between how we view and react to the world around us. Being more conscientious about the company you keep is not a matter of being disingenuous to yourself. That is if you are responsibly creating alignment with your inner self, not pretending to be someone you know, you're not, is not the goal. You should always, um, address areas of life that bring you the most alignment with your inner self. There may be people you love, but your their lifestyle is in constant chaos and can only serve to bring you along for the ride. And then you will be inhibited from pursuing um, true alignment in your life. You can still love them, but maybe keep a little bit of a distance just so that way you can also pursue your true self. It's by no means easy but to progress in life, it may be necessary. The goal should be to reinforce a growth attitude, and that requires the presence of positive influences. This doesn't stop with just the people around you. It could also be with what you're just taking into your mind. Um, if those things, now I'm not saying drop all entertainment. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. Um, but just be more regulatory with the things that go into your mind. Put more positive into your mind to get positive out. 
If you stuck around this long in the video, thank you. Uh, this was a very, very long topic to talk about. And it's not an easy topic to catch or capture because it deals with so many different things. However, hope this topic did help you and you feel a bit more empowered on your journey. Feel welcome to hit the like button and comment down below if there's a topic you would like for me to offer insight on i encourage you to let me know also if you're interested in following my journey up close or are interested in additional content on personal growth feel free to follow me on social media you can find my details in the description below and until next time stay golden my wonderful warriors